I shouldn't do this. Remember my famous video on loudness? Well, this is one of the main tools to achieve that great crest factor in mix. This plugin has been around for a long time and it's still at the top and there's a reason for it. There are many like it, but only one inflator. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, welcome back to MixQuest TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugins, special discounts and offers. If the videos are helping you, you want to support the channel, click the join button down here, see all the perks of becoming a MixQuest TV member. Access exclusive posts, videos, live chats and also mix consultations with me via email or Skype. But let's get to the video. Sonox Inflator has been around for a very long time. It never changed and it's still at the top. Why? Because it was designed by a genius named Paul Frindle. This plugin was purposely designed to increase the perceived loudness of the material. It's not a compressor, so it has no pumping. It's not a brick wall limiter. It's an enhancer, as in it adds harmonic content to the material, density. It's the closest thing to a clipper or clipping a very good ADDA stage one of the dirtiest secrets in mastering and mixing. Its main application, I would say, is mix, as in the whole mix, or mastering, but is also a great, great tool for single tracks and groups to add density. Very few controls on the interface. We have an input effect curve and output faders, and then three buttons, clip, band split, and effect in. As you can see, the input fader can go above the digital zero, and so does the metering. See here the zero, it can go 60B above it. The reason why is because inflator process develops internal signal levels that are notionally greater than the digital maximum. Basically, it can handle signals over the digital zero, just like a good analog clipper would. If instead the clip button is engaged, the signal will not exceed the digital zero no matter how much input you apply. This is important because these are already two different ways to create harmonic content to add density with inflator. You can either leave the clip off and drive the input or leave the clip button on still driving the input. This will give you two different sounds, two different types of clipping. So you can look at this first process as the closest thing as, like I said before, hitting on a DDA stage hard and clipping a mastering grade converter. Then we have the effect fader. This will of course increase the amount of distortion and harmonic content that inflator applies on the material. The manual will tell you that the best effects are usually achieved with the effect at 100%. But in my opinion, that depends 100% on what the input level is and if you have the clip on or off. We are gonna hear the differences in a minute. Then we have the curve fader that changes the color and the character of the harmonic distortion introduced. In the mid position will give you a good balance between fatness and increase in perceived loudness while retaining dynamic values that goes from zero for actually minus 50 to zero are supposed to be more subtle and of course the higher you go the more obvious the effect it is uh, there's a shift in energy in the high mid range you will hear it in a minute output is self-explanatory then we have a split band if certain material is heavy on a specific range this will split the signal in three bands and make the inflator work individually on each band. Think hip hop EDM, if you have a very heavy low end, you might wanna try that. Generally speaking, it's advised to start with the band split off, and then if your material is particularly dynamic, or like I said, it has one range that is predominant compared to the others, then try the band split. But let's hear how it sounds. We're gonna try it on a bunch of mixes, all my mixes, and at first I will leave the effect out and just try the input. To give you a reference, I will open a loudness meter so you get an idea and take a look also at the Pro Tools meter not clipping. Try to look around yourself, everything just looks so fair. The 
there is some distortion of course but you saw i was actually a minus 2 lufs so if you're familiar with these numbers you know already what that means that was we clip on just clipping the input of this thing now let's turn the clip off this is uh, a mode that is more meant to uh, prevent overshot for example you have a slow attack on drums to enhance the transient but you like the sound but it overshoots instead of using a limiter that's what in flatter come to play but we'll try on a mix first now the only way to avoid overshoot when the clip is off is to have the effect all the way in and so we can start hearing how the effect works so try to look around yourself everything just looks so bad Right? So you can see the inflator can handle signals that overshoot the digital zero. With the effect of 100%, you're not going to clip the output. And um, now let's try with the effect of 100% the different curves. Try to look around yourself. Everything just looks so bad. And what we're leaving seems to be so wild. Alright, my personal taste for the curve, if I have the effect on 100%, is usually here between 30 and 20, minus 10. Uh, usually halfway is the higher I will go for the tone, especially on modern music, because they tend to be bright. And the higher you go, the brighter it sounds to me. But also you can engage the clip and adjust the effect halfway through. Note that with these settings there's very little distortion although my volume is really low right now and we are at minus 4 LUFS. Uh, you can go a lot lower than this around yourself everything just looks so bad and what we're leaving seems to be so wild this is inflator if you didn't know it this is the dirtiest secret for loudness and i would say for good sounding loud and especially for a certain genre the inflator actually is a sound that you want uh, and you want not so subtle uh, some people mix into it. I used to. I still do on some genres. With that said, if you didn't know it and this is the first time you see it, you're probably going, holy... Sh One advice. A little goes a long way, okay? Because distortion masks easily, especially if you don't have a very good monitoring system like this. Uh, it masks very well. Uh, it can mask on headphones, although headphones are a good way to test if there's distortion that is masking meaning it could sound good and not distorted in your studio but if you push it too much it could sound distorted in some other uh, consumer system so a little goes a long way and experiment with it especially if you're mixing for clients before giving your client a mix or a master done with this if it's the first time you use it if you knew it already it's on sale right now, so if you didn't get it so far, this is the right moment. Let's try on this mix that you can see from the waveform is very dynamic. Same down vibes, I know that you heard this. 
I deserved it. After what the hurt did, it'll turn out perfect. I told you I'd make a sound like what real sound like. I'm still the same down guy, same down vibes. I know that you heard it. I deserved it. After what the hurt. This is a mix in which we could try the band split and see how it reacts. Watch it though, because when you engage it, you will have, you can have an overshoot on the output. Okay, you can hear it retains the low and the bottom a little better with the band split, but again, watch it because you can have overshoot on the output. Uh, this in combination with the usual tool they use for mastering other clippers, okay, clip three comes to mind and a brick wall limiter is a loudness monster. Let's try on another mix. I'm trying to level match here so you can hear not just the level difference, the perceived loudness difference, but also how much richer is the material with this on. Here again you can hear with the band split clipping the input it retains a little better the bottom end uh, such a cool plug-in this is one of the latest mix that I've done really love this track I'm somewhat exaggerating the setting so you can hear a little crunchiness here and there, but just to show you what a massive increase in perceived loudness this plugin uh, can give you. And like I said before, a little goes a long way. So uh, one, two, three dB, the effect, I usually keep it around 30% curve on the lower portion. Uh, that's the way I like to use it. Still, some material, you can really push it hard and it actually fits the style. Metal and rock is one of them. Again, I'm pushing it really hard so you can hear the difference, but you can hear how much more aggressive this drum sounds. And this goes for every single track, every group. You can increase the 
uh, harmonic content of every track with inflator. Let's try another instrument that I really love it on is bass, whether it's 808 or real bass. Okay, it can help you translate really deep bass in small speakers, for example. On real bass, same thing. Okay, if you look at the meter, we are about at the same nominal level without. We're actually higher. But we perceive it a lot louder, okay? But this is it for this video. At the time I'm filming this, Sonox Inflator is on sale. Link is gonna be in the info box down below. I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. This plugin has been around, like I said, for a long time and it's still at the top for a reason. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any question, leave it in the comment down below. Leave your questions also for the rapid fire Q&A because we are back. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.